ask me to Bermuda. It's time for the Mad Merlin's unboxing of Hornby TT120 The Easterner by Hornby Model Railways. Hello everyone and welcome to another Mad Merlin's unboxing and today is my first unboxing for the Hornby TT120 range. So I've already done my uh, overview of the range itself and the first issue of the club magazine. And it's a really exciting um, time to be a model railway hobbyist. Um, as people are well aware, living situations are getting a bit more cramped nowadays. And TT120 is um, basically a much more space conscious scale and is a little more of a true scale uh, range of models. So yeah, it's gonna be a good range. So as I just said, what is TT120? So it's Hornby, Hornby's new scale range. And like I said, it's space conscious. So for those of you who haven't got much space, but can easily set up a three by four board. You can easily set yourself up a nice little um, circuit using this new scale. You can definitely pack more into it than you would with double O, but not as much as you would with an N gauge. Um, as you can see, there's nothing in front of you at the moment for the unboxing. That's because it is, as most model railway sets, a rather large box. So I'm gonna to have to adjust the camera in a bit and then we can get into the actual uh, unboxing of the set itself. So I will adjust the camera and I'll be right back. So here we are with the train set itself. So this is the Easterner and the Easterner was a moniker for the uh, London to Edinburgh service running along the East Coast back in the 1950s. So this is locomotive 60004 William Whitehall. I'll give you a few more facts about this particular loco when we get to the um, up close personal rev stage of the review. But first let's take a look inside the actual box itself. shows it's not been opened it's fighting me so Whew. that was more effort than it needed to be so we'll set the box back there so we are greeted with this lovely tray and if we move the lid itself, we see the contents of our pack here. So we've got the standard basic Hornby controller. Um, as most people will suggest, get yourself a much better one. This is pretty, um, some weight to it, but it's lightweight. It's not... The best is a perfect get starting controller, but definitely invest in a good one. I know a lot of the TT120 range is going to be compatible with the new um, Hornby app that they are working on. So if you have your DCC fitted on all your locos and stuff, you can run your trains from your phone, which a lot of us have a phone nowadays with at least smartphone basic features so got a random piece of plastic there so we've got a locomotive and wow that is pretty heavy yeah the loco is same if not heavier than the controller so some definite weight there. 
like I said, we will take a closer look at this beauty in a minute. So there's our loco. And we've got our rolling stock. So we've got BR Mark 1 Composites times 2. There's a the second. Lovely, nice maroon red colour. Yeah, very nice. And then we have a... I think I've already done the Mark 1 break. Yeah, there's the brake coach. So, so that's the second composite coach. And this is our brake coach here with the baggage compartment at the rear. So we've got our track, we've got all our curves. So we've got a shallow curve, which is going to be attached to the points. And all the rest are our radius curves for our track. We've got our straight track, including our power connector and our points. So much the same as standard Hornby points. But really good quality track. We've got the power plug for our controller and finally we got our revealer and our set of buffer point buffer stops and finally you can just about see it there we got some fine details to attach to our trains so we've got the vacuum pipes and even some pipes there that run from the cylinders I think that is everything. Yeah, we just got our basic paperwork, so we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. It's nothing special, just general care for your uh, lo locomotive and how to use your controller and stuff. So the one thing these sets don't have that other train sets have is the um, track mat. It is shown here on the back. This is absolutely free to download from the Hornby website. You will need a pretty big printer in order to print it off at the correct scale. But so we get the basic oval here with the track pack, track pack extension one. So we get a siding and some extra straights. So we can extend this into track pack two, which adds a half in of line track pack three um, finishes the inner line and gives us a second siding. Track pack four extends the second siding into another double siding. And then finally track pack five will add a inner siding and give us two lar uh, larger double sidings there and the single siding. So most of the um, buildings are shown here are the Settle and Carlisle um, style buildings from the uh, Hornby Scaledale range, newly scaled to the TT120 scale, of course. So we've got a single station, a through station here, good shed, engine shed, signal box, and a watering tower there as well. So pretty nice, very good basic line for a beginner. But I have had experience in model railways and I have been planning a new one for some time. This new range was the absolute clincher for me to actually get on with it. So we'll zoom back in again and we'll take a closer look at some of the components. And I'll get my turntable out so we can see them rotating So what we'll do, we'll start with the track and the paperwork before we look at the locomotives and the rolling stock up close. So our track is just held on with these um, thin little elastic bands. Just pull them off to free up our track. So then we have our straights, 
These are the double straights, I believe. And we got our points there as well. So they have nice length. Um, I haven't got a measure stick next to me. But these are really good pieces of track. Perfect, I think, for a beginner hobbyist. Or of a turner, much like myself. So we have one, two, three, four, five double straights. No, nope, six double straights, I can't count. We have a power connecting clip here, which is again another double straight. We've got a left handed point. And then we've got all our curves. So we've got a small curve here for our siding. And then we've got our eight curves here. I believe they're third radius. Doesn't actually say on the outside of the box, but I think they are third radius. Yeah. So we'll set this up in a bit and I'll show you the locomotive running. But first, let's take a closer look at our locomotive and the rolling stock. So, yeah. So here we have locomotive 60004. William Whitelaw in the BR Green, and she is a lovely locomotive, the A4 class. The reason I chose this one over the Scotsman was um, I've never had an A4, so this is quite a pretty much um, straight up choice for me to pick. You can see she is nicely detailed. Mm, I can't see any immediate damages. I have heard people saying there's been some damage to these locomotives out of the box, but mine seems to be okay. Yeah. Looking very lovely there. I believe we've got separate fitted handrails there, so they're not moulded on. Most of the other details, though, are moulded on. There's really nice details. We've got lots of rivets. We've got whistles safety valves and all sorts. She is, like I said, really, really detailed. Even the coal in the tender looks pretty good. So, like I said, the only other um, separate fitted bits are the vacuum pipes and I believe it's some of the small gold details that go to the um, drive cylinders there. But there we have her. Looking good. Can't wait to get her running. I'll give you a little view of her running in a minute. So let's take a look at our coaches next, I think. Oh, yeah, sorry, before we do go any further, a few facts about this particular locomotive. So built in 1937 at Doncaster Works, she was later withdrawn in 1966, was originally one of two locomotives named Great Snipe, but was later renamed. In 1941, she is named after the Scottish Conservative politician William Whitelaw. The class A4s were, of course, the next evolution of Gresley's A3 designs. They were more streamlined and worked the East Coast from London to Edinburgh. Most famous of this class, of course, was cla number 4468, the Mallard who broke the world record for steam in 1938, reaching a massive 126 miles per hour at the time. And here we have our coaches. So these are just BR Mark 1s in that lovely deep maroon red colour. So we get two of the composite and one of the brake. And they are really nicely detailed. They've got window stickers for no smoking. As well as moulded seats on the inside there as well. So they do look pretty nice for a nice starter set um, piece. But all in all, they will be quite nice and will look nice running behind our locomotive. So I've just forgotten we haven't looked at the paperwork. So we'll look at the paperwork then we'll get this locomotive up and running. So here we have our pieces of paperwork and it's just our 
um, general maintenance operations instructions for the class A1, A3 and A4s. So we got our points of lubrication, so the main wheels underneath the loco, the pistons there. So we've got the accessories here. We've got a vacuum pipe front, a vacuum pipe rear, two drain cocks, and a set of chains. So we've got assembly here for plugging in our DCC as well. And then we've got how to access the internal workings of our locomotive there and fitting, of course, our decoders. And then we've got a few extra um, safety notes on the rear. And then we have our controller operation instructions as well. So safety warnings on the front. And on the inside, we've got how to connect it all how to operate, so making sure you have your direction set, then slowly increase your speed. As with all trains, you do want to run this in for about half an hour in each direction, just to help um, ease up our, all the mechanisms on the so, inside. Like I said, I'm about to set up the train and we will see this beautiful locomotive and it's rolling stock running. Okay, so I have run the locomotive in half an hour in each direction. So now we will back her onto the train and give her a little run session just for the camera. So turning the power up. Got a pretty good crawl there. Setting up to half power now. And there she is coming in to the siding. I'll slow her down a bit. Get help to connect up. Okay, on to forward direction and let's see how well she pulls. Bit of a wheel slip there. Turn the power up a little bit more. Onto half power, and there we go. Oh, it sounds like we've got a derailment already. So she's running pretty well. She does struggle a little bit, I've noticed. Especially on the corners. But she is going pretty well and that carriage has come off again. So I think it might just be that I haven't got the track perfectly flat. I have connected it all, but there must be a slight bump somewhere i know the the baseboard i got here isn't exactly the best it is my gaming and painting table but it'll do just for a demonstration um i have heard from other people that the carriages do tend to derail and are rather noisy as you might be able to hear and yeah that 
back coach has derailed again. So that seems to be a problem. Yeah, I don't think they seem to take the corners all too well. And they'll slow it down again and try and get that sorted. <laughs> right, so, third time's the charm. And now he's off straight away. So yeah, it must be something to do with that particular carriage then. It seems to always be coming off. Yeah, it is leaning really bad there on that corner. So... I'll just go ahead and take that off for the moment. See how the train goes with just the two. And I nodged it off the track there. Yeah, handling two coaches a lot better than she was handling three. So that's something to note. Out of the box, not the best puller, but a lovely locomotive with some nice rolling stock regardless. And that's only at half speed. We can, of course, ramp her up a bit more. But we don't want to be too unrealistic with it. Faster speeds for the high speed locomotives and stuff, but we want to keep it pretty slow, semi-realistic with the good old steamer. So yeah, I think that will be it for this video. Um, so price-wise for this set, the RRP is £195. Uh, if you have signed up to the TT Club discount, you will get 15% off. So I paid £165 for it with free postage from Hornby. And Hornby Direct is the only place you can get TT at the moment. So my final thoughts then for this set it is a rather nice set. This is the first time I've had an A4 and it is a lovely little locomotive. And I can see myself having hours of fun with this train set. So my next plans are to extend the layout itself. Like I said... Really good set, perfect for beginners and uh, returning modelers alike. If you do feel like TT might be for you, do give this a try. There is also the Scotsman layout, which comes with Pullman coaches and an A3. And that one is a little bit more, I believe that's 205 as opposed to 195. Uh, you are paying for, I think, the Pullman name rather than anything else. Pullman coaches do tend to be a bit more price-wise. I think it's because they're a very famous livery, plus they have got to put the extra effort of naming each one individually. So each, each carriage will need its own printing for its name or number, depending on the coach. Whereas the BR Mark 1s that we have in this set, they are pretty much just bog standard. They've got some nice uh, window printing elements, which is nice, so there's no smoking. There's even um, first class, I believe. I don't know if there's any, no, there's no actual window printings. Oh, so it's on the opposite side, we do have a no smoking triangle there. And we've also got guard there and the coach number itself so as you can see really nice detail yeah emergency lighting point there so yeah really nice detail on these so um 
my plans to expand this is, like I said, I'm going to be right, trying to decide on the elements I would like to see in a train set. I've always wanted to do uh, add some bridges to layouts. So I've never done that. I'd like to do some inclines, gentle ones. Uh, maybe do some cuttings through a valley or something with a tunnel and bridge. And I definitely want to do some water features, which I've not done again, not done before as well. So there is a lot to be done, and I'm going to have to end the video there, I think. So all that's left for me to do is to say thank you all for watching. If you think I deserve it, please give this video a like and subscribe if you don't already. Also drop a comment down below if you are a TT or Model Railway fan. And let me know what you think of this review. And there will be some polls coming up in the future on my channel. So pay attention um, as I'm going to be giving you lot, the viewers, the say in what elements get added to my layout. So, thank you again for watching and I will see you next time for more mad content. Goodbye.